What is child abuse and neglect? Recognizing the signs and symptoms. The first step in helping children who have been abused or neglected is learning to recognize the signs of maltreatment. The presence of a single sign does not necessarily mean that child maltreatment is occurring in a family, but a closer look at the situation may be warranted when these signs appear repeatedly or in combination. This fact sheet is intended to help you better understand the federal definition of child abuse and neglect, learn about the different types of abuse and neglect, including human trafficking and recognizing their signs and symptoms. This video also includes additional resources with information on how to effectively identify and report maltreatment and refer children who have been maltreated. Okay. So how is child abuse and neglect defined in federal law? Federal legislation lays the groundwork for state laws on child maltreatment by identifying a minimum set of actions or behaviors that define child abuse and neglect. The Federal Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, also known as CAPTA, as amended and reauthorized by the CAPTA Reauthorization Act of 2010, defines child abuse abuse and neglect as at a minimum any recent act or failure to act on the part of a parent or caretaker which results in death, serious physical or emotional harm, sexual abuse or exploitation, including sexual abuse as determined under section 111, or an act or failure to act which presents an imminent risk of serious harm. That's 42 USC 5101. Additionally, it stipulates that a child shall be considered a victim of child abuse and neglect and of sexual abuse if the child is identified by a state or local agency employee of the state or locality involved as being a victim of sex trafficking or a victim of severe forms of trafficking in persons described in this section. Most federal and state child protection laws primarily refer to cases of harm to a child caused by parents or other caregivers. They generally do not include harm caused by other people, such as acquaintances or strangers. Some state laws in also include a child's witnessing of domestic violence as a form of abuse or neglect. Okay, so what are the major types of child abuse and neglect? Within the minimum standards set by CAPTA, each state is responsible for providing its own definitions of child abuse and neglect. Most states recognize four major types of maltreatment. One, physical abuse. Two, neglect. Three, sexual abuse. And four, emotional abuse. Most states recognize these four types of maltreatment. Again, those are physical abuse, neglect, sexual abuse, and emotional abuse. Additionally, many states identify abandonment, parental substance use, and human trafficking trafficking as abuse or neglect. While some of these types of maltreatment can be found separately, they can occur in combination. Okay, so now we're going to go into the definitions of each of the four. All right, first let's talk about physical abuse. Physical abuse is a non-accidental physical injury to a child caused by a parent, caregiver, or other person responsible for a child and can include punching, beating, kicking, biting, shaking, throwing, stabbing, choking, hitting, that includes with a hand, stick, strap, or other object, burning, or otherwise causing physical harm. Physical discipline, such as spanking or paddling, is not considered abuse as long as it is reasonable and causes no bodily injury to the child. Injuries from physical abuse could range from minor bruises to severe fractures or death. Okay, that was physical abuse. Now let's talk about neglect. Neglect is the failure of a parent or other caregiver to provide for a child's basic needs. Neglect generally includes the following categories. Physical, medical, educational, and emotional. So let's first look at physical neglect. That is failure to provide necessary food or shelter or lack of appropriate supervision. Medical neglect is the failure to provide necessary medical or mental health treatment, withholding medically indicated treatment from children with life-threatening conditions. Okay, educational neglect is failure to educate a child or attend to special education needs. Four is emotional neglect, that is inattention to a child's emotional needs 
failure to provide psychological care permitting or permitting a child to use alcohol or other drugs. Sometimes cultural values, the standards of care in the community and poverty may contribute to what is perceived as maltreatment, indicating the family may need information or assistance. It is important to note that living in poverty is not considered child abuse or neglect. However, a child's a family's failure to use available information and resources to care for their child may put the child's health or safety at risk and a child welfare intervention could be required. In addition, many states provide an exception to the definition of neglect for parents who choose not to seek medical care for their children due to religious beliefs. Okay, that was neglect. Now let's go into sexual abuse. Sexual abuse includes activities by a parent or other caregiver, such as fondling a child's genitals, penetration, incest, rape, sodomy, indecent exposure, and exploitation through prostitution or the production of pornographic materials. Sexual abuse is defined by CAPTA as the employment, use, persuasion, inducement, enticement, or coercion of any child to engage in or assist any other person to engage in any sexually explicit conduct or stimulation or simulation of such conduct for the purpose of producing a visual depiction of such conduct or the rape and in cases of caretaker or interfamilial relationships, statutory rape, molestation, prostitution, or other form of sexual exploitation of children or incest with children. That is found under 42 USC section 5106 GA4. Okay, that was sexual abuse, now emotional abuse. Emotional abuse, also known as psychological abuse, is a pattern of behavior that impairs a child's emotional development or sense of self-worth. This may include constant criticism, threats, or rejection, as well as withholding love, support, or guidance. Emotional abuse is often difficult to prove, and therefore child protective services may not be able to intervene without evidence of harm or mental injury to the child. Okay, that was emotional abuse. Now let's talk about abandonment. Abandonment is considered in many states as a form of neglect. In general, a child is considered to be abandoned when the parent's identity or whereabouts are unknown. The child has been left alone in circumstances where the child suffers serious harm or the child has been deserted with no regard for his or her health or safety or the parent has failed to maintain contact with the child or provide reasonable support for a specified period of time. Some state laws or some states have enacted laws often called safe haven laws that provide Safe places for parents to relinquish newborn infants. Okay, now that was abandonment. Now we're going to talk about parental substance use. Parental substance use is included in the definition of child abuse or neglect in many states. Related circumstances that are considered abuse or neglect in some states include the following. Exposing a child to harm prenatally due to the mother's use of legal or illegal drugs or other substances manufacturing methamphetamine in the presence of a child, selling, distributing, or giving illegal drugs or alcohol to a child, using a controlled substance that impairs the caregiver's ability to adequately care for the child. Okay, that was parental substance use. Now let's talk about human trafficking. Human trafficking is considered a form of modern slavery and includes both sex trafficking and labor trafficking. Sex trafficking is recruiting, harboring, transporting, providing, or obtaining someone for a commercial sex act, such as prostitution, pornography, or stripping. Labor trafficking is forced labor, including drug dealing, begging, or working long hours for little pay. Although human tra trafficking includes victims of any sex, age, and race, ethnicity, or socioeconomic status, children involved in child welfare, including children who are in out-of-home care, are especially vulnerable. Okay, now we are moving on to recognizing signs of abuse and neglect and when to report. It is important to recognize high risk situations and the signs and symptoms of maltreatment. If you suspect a child is being harmed, reporting your suspicions may protect him or her and help the family receive assistance. Any concerned person can report suspicions of child abuse or neglect Reporting your concerns is not making an accusation. Rather, it is a request for an investigation and assessment to determine if help is needed. Okay, some 
people, typically certain types of professionals such as teachers or physicians, are required by state laws to report child maltreatment under specific circumstances. Some states require all adults to report suspicions of child abuse or neglect. Individuals required to report maltreatment are called mandatory reporters. For information about where and how to file a report, contact your local Child Protective Services Agency or Police Department. Okay, all right, moving on, we're still discussing recognizing signs of abuse and neglect and when to report. Now, while it is important to know the signs of physical, mental, and emotional abuse and neglect, which are provided later in this fact sheet, the following signs of general maltreatment also can help determine whether a child needs help. Okay, for example, if the child shows sudden changes in behavior or school performance, the child has not received help for physical or medical problems brought to the parent's attention. The child has learning problems or difficulty concentrating that cannot be attributed to specific physical or psychological causes. The child is always watchful as though preparing for something bad to happen. The child lacks adult supervision. The child is overly compliant, passive, or withdrawn. The child comes to school or other activities early, stays late, and does not want to go home. The child is reluctant to be around a particular person. Or the child discloses maltreatment. Okay? Now, those were signs of physical, mental, and emotional abuse from the child. Now, let's look at the parent. The parent denies the existence of or blames the child for the child's problems in school or at home. The parent asks teachers or other caregivers to use harsh physical discipline if the child misbehaves. The parent sees the child as entirely bad, worthless, or burdensome. The parent demands a level of physical or academic performance the child cannot achieve. The parent looks primarily to the child for care, attention, and satisfaction of the parent's emotional needs. And the parent shows little concern for the child. Okay, now that was the parent. Now let's look at parent and child together. There is concern if the parent and child touch or look at each other rarely, or consider their relationship entirely negative, or state consistently that they do not like each other. Now, the preceding list is not a comprehensive list of the signs of maltreatment. It is important to pay attention to other behaviors that may seem unusual or concerning. Additionally, the presence of these signs does not necessarily mean that a child is being maltreated. There may be other causes. There are, however, indicators that others should be concerned about the child's welfare, particularly when multiple signs are present or they occur repeatedly. Okay, now let's go over a list of signs of physical abuse. A child who exhibits the following signs may be a victim of physical abuse. If the child has unexplained injuries such as burns, bites, bruises, broken bones, or black eyes, has fading bruises or other noticeable marks after an absence from school, the child seems scared, anxious, depressed, withdrawn, or aggressive, the child seems frightened of his or her parents and protests or cries when it is time to go home, the child shrinks at the approach of adults. The child shows changes in eating and sleeping habits. The child reports injury by a parent or another adult caregiver, or the child abuses animals or pets. Okay, now that was signs of physical abuse. Consider the possibility of physical abuse when a parent or other adult caregiver exhibits the following offers conflicting, unconvincing, or no explanation for the child's injury or provides an explanation that is not consistent with the injury, shows little concern for the child, sees the child as entirely bad, burdensome, or worthless, uses harsh physical discipline with the child, or has a history of abusing animals or pets. Okay, that was signs of physical abuse. Now, signs of neglect. A child who exhibits the following signs may be a victim of neglect. So here are the signs of neglect. It's frequently absent from school, begs or steals food or money, lacks needed medical care, including immunizations, dental care, or glasses, is consistently dirty and has severe body odor, 
lack sufficient clothing for the weather, abuses alcohol or other drugs, states that there is no one at home to provide care. Now, you should consider the possibility of neglect when a parent or other caregiver exhibits the following. Uh, appears to be indifferent to the world, seems apathetic or depressed, behaves irrationally or in a bizarre manner, abuses alcohol or other drugs. All right, that was signs of neglect. Now let's talk about signs of sexual abuse. A child who exhibits the following signs may be a victim of sexual abuse. They have difficulty walking or sitting, experiences bleeding, bruising, or swelling in their private parts, suddenly refuses to go to school, reports nightmares or bedwetting, experiences a sudden change in appetite, demonstrates bizarre, sophisticated, or unusual sexual knowledge or behavior, becomes pregnant or contracts a sexually transmitted disease, particularly if under age 14, runs away, reports sexual abuse by a parent or another adult caregiver, or attaches very quickly to strangers or new adults in their environment. Now, consider the possibility of sexual abuse when a parent or other caregiver exhibits the following. Tries to be the child's friend rather than assume an adult role. Makes up excuses to be alone with the child. Talks with the child about the adult's personal problems or relationships. Okay, that was signs of sexual abuse. Now, signs of emotional abuse. A child who ex exhibits the following signs may be a victim of emotional maltreatment. They show extre extremes in behavior, such as being overly compliant or demanding, extremely passive or aggressive, is either inappropriately adult, i.e. parenting other children, or inappropriately infantile, meaning frequently rocking or headbanging. If are they delayed in physical or emotional development, do they show signs of depression or suicidal thoughts, or do they report an inability to develop emotional bonds with others? Now consider the possibility of emotional maltreatment when the parent or other caregiver exhibits the following. Constantly blames, belittles, or berates the child. Describes the child negatively. Overtly rejects the child. Okay, so that was it for the signs of emotional maltreatment. So let's briefly discuss the impact of childhood trauma on well-being. Child abuse and neglect can have lifelong implications for victims, including on their well-being. While the physical wounds may heal, there are many long-term consequences of experiencing the trauma of abuse or neglect. A child or youth's ability to cope and thrive after trauma is called resilience. With help, many of these children can work through and overcome their past experiences. Now, it's important to note that children who are maltreated may be at risk of experiencing cognitive delays and emotional difficulties, among other issues, which can affect many aspects of their lives, including their academic outcomes and social skills development. Experiencing childhood maltreatment also is a risk factor for depression, anxiety, and other psychiatric disorders. Okay, uh, there's a handful of resources and references supporting this publication. It's called the What is Child Abuse and Neglect? Recognizing the Signs and Symptoms, published by uh, Child Welfare Information Gateway. I'll leave a link down to uh, the resources and references and suggested citation. Citation for this video is childwelfare.gov slash pub slash fact sheets slash what is can. End.